Welcome to the Great Exodus series, God's plan of rescue for his children, let my people go, the path to Mount Zion. My name is Michael, I'm the founder of Triple Grace and the Righteous Path Movement Foundation, and the author of the Book of Love, the standard literature of Triple Grace. Today, I have a special treat for you. Today, we will start the challenge of a pure heart. What is the challenge of a pure heart? The challenge of a pure heart is you will compare your Christian life that you have now with the Christian life that the first believers had at the time of the apostles in the book of Acts. And then you see where you stand. Can you meet the challenge of the pure heart? Are you walking in a similar fashion? So let us start now with the challenge of the pure heart. This is our page where you will go for the challenge of the pure heart. Triple Grace and the Righteous Path Movement Foundation. The challenge of the pure heart. Ask yourself, are you a true Christian with a pure heart that the first followers of Christ had? Take part in the challenge of a pure heart by reading the following passages in the book of Acts. So let us start and read these passages first. Okay, so we are now in Acts 2, 42 to 47, yes. So, and they continued steadfastly in the Apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the Apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possession of goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now, this part in Act 2, 42-47 is now the coming together in one accord and supporting one another. Now let's go to Act 4.32. Act 4.32. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul, Neither had any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things in common. Again, neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things common. And with great power gives the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them, and brought the prices of the things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was summoned Barnabas, a son named Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now, let's go back now to, to, to our challenge of a pure heart. You see, Act 4, 32-37, 
This is charity, selling off possessions to assist the cause and the needy. Now go to Act 5, 1, Act 5, 1, 2. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira his wife sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why had Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not your own power? Why has you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all of them that heard these things. And the young man arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered to her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yes, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried your husband are at the door, and shall carry you out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young man came in and found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon the church, and upon as many as heard these things. This is Act 5, 1 to 11, punishment for people who misled the group and the apostles. And now we go to the last one, Act 6, 1 to 7. That is 6, 1 to 7. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neg neglected in the daily ministration. Then, that is charity, then the twelve called the multitude of the dis disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, look you out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. The word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. These are the verses that you should reflect on. Acts 6, 1 to 7 is helping the widows and the poor. Let's put it again together. Acts 2, 42 to 47, coming together in one accord and supporting one another. Acts 4, 32, 37, charity, selling of possession of your possessions, excess that you have more than you need to assist the cause and the needy. Act 5, 1 to 11, punishment for people who mis misled the group and the apostles. Act 6, 1 to 7, helping the widows and the poor. Now, now let's continue in our, in our challenge of the pure heart. Now, Apply these verses to your life now, your life right now, as a Christian, not in the world, as a Christian, and see if you have a pure heart, like an early Christian, or if you are still lacking in the following areas. Here we have listed now the areas that you can either fulfill or where you are lacking. They had all things in common. Do you? Do you have a group where you have all things in common? They sold their excess, possession and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need. 
Have you ever sold excess to lift up the needy to help the poor? Have you not access, maybe a second or third TV, or a second car, or extra land, or extra houses, or everything that you could sell and lift up the needy, the nameless and faceless? They continue daily with one accord. Are you in a group that comes together every day to get empowered and then to go out into the neighborhood to shine forth their light? They had favor with all the people. Uh, do you have favor with all your neighbors or are you more or less in strife every day with them? Where the people are complaining or you complaining about them? Or even backstabbing your own brothers and sisters in Christ? Do you really have favor with all the people? They were of one heart and one soul. Great grace was upon them all. Is your life filled with with much grace, with triple grace, from the Father, from the Son, from the Holy Spirit, none of them lacked anything. Are you lacking something? They sold their possessions and laid them at the feet of the apostles. Again as before, are you doing charity? Are you supporting the ministries that are addicted to the gathering of the saints? for the rapture of the church at the sixth seal at Mount Zion. Distributions were made unto every man according as he had need. When the funds are available, then these ministries are helping the needy, are helping the ones who have need. And distribution can be made because there's plenty available at the time of the apostles. There was plenty, plenty for the apostles to travel, plenty for the apostles to go into the nation, and plenty to help the widows, the poor, give, bring forth food. Everything was there. Everything was available. Nobody had any lack. People who misled the group by claiming they had no access or keeping part of such actions were punished. Are you punished now if you are hiding your excess and say, oh, I have nothing, when you know it is a true lie? Because most people, I would say over 90% of all people, of all Christians, have some kind of access, excess. It does not have to be very much, but almost everybody is there. If you think how you live your daily life, you know that there is a kind of excess. They served the widows and the poor daily. Are you doing that? And if you cannot do it yourself, are you then supporting somebody who is, who is doing that? Like Triple Grace, for example? Relief and charity was in their heart. Is that in your heart or is it in your heart to go for a new car, for a better apartment, for a bigger house, for another bigger TV, for your games, in PS4 or whatever. Is relief and charity in your heart? They grew huge in numbers. Now the churches are declining, so we see there is a problem. Everybody could see their light and, and their pure heart through the righteous deeds, which gave them white garment for the resurrection into eternal life. Revelation 19, verse 8. You see, the righteous deeds that they, done, that, they had, that they were doing at that time. Every day the people saw, look, they are committed not only to their living God, not only to prayers, not only to be empowered, no, but they bring out this power into their neighborhood and helping the people and lift up the needy. They were completely separated from the world at that time, at the time of the apostles. And this is what we have to do again. Come out of the world, out of Babylon, and be separated as the first Christian did in the book of Acts. If you are lacking in one or more areas, take a first step here and let your pure heart shine by giving for a pure child in Cambodia. Or go to our Mission to Cambodia page and the link is here. Then follow up by having a look at our YouTube channel of Triple Grace 555 and watch the resources we offer. There are plenty of videos that should empower you and send you into the fields to bring in the great harvest of the Lord. The mission, oops, 
The mission of Triple Grace is to restore the first assemblies of love and righteousness in the nations, a true copy of the Book of Acts. We call such assemblies societies of the rose, who are spreading the love of the Father and the teaching of Jesus, as the first Christians did in house churches, in meeting places, and with love meals, coming together daily to do a daily sacrifice of love in the neighborhoods. By doing so, shining their light to the people, to the lost sheep, to the needy. Also join our website with many free resources and videos about the restoration of the new altar of love, unity and support. What kind of love? Earthly love? No. The love of the Father, the love of Yahweh. Unity, having everything in common, coming together every day in the societies of the Rose. And support, support for one another within the societies of the Rose and support of the needy, the nameless and faceless in your neighborhood. Take part in the challenge of the pure heart and show that you are a true Christian by supporting the needy, the children and the poor. Make a donation to show that you are part of a loving Christian community that understands that sharing resources is not an invention of modern time, but a commandment of the Lord and a great part in the first assemblies of Jesus Christ at the time of the Apostles and in, written in the book of Acts. This challenge is running until oh, we put here 31st. It will go to the 2nd of September 2019 to allow even people who go over payday and something like that. So this challenge is running until the 2nd of September 2019 and we ourselves are very much interested in how many believers are out there who have a true heart and who take this challenge and ad or admit that they are lacking something. But we want to see how many believers are coming here to this challenge of a true heart and see themselves as a first Christian follower of the past, or at least as a new follower of the past, by taking part in it. And after the challenge has ended on the 2nd of September 2019, then we will take all the people who have taken part and have admitted to their lack or admitted that they are true Christian and have shown forth their true and pure heart will be taken in a special prayer to the Father Yahweh and to the court in heaven. All the people who have taken part, all the people who have donated, who have helped, who have supported, who come forth with anything, they will be taken in a great prayer session to the Father, to Yahweh, into heaven, and to the court in heaven. Because our rewards are not earthly, our rewards are not worldly, our rewards are heavenly. What do you think? How many Christians will show forth their pure heart? And the greatest question is, are you one of them? And this is our challenge of the pure heart. I think it's something special, something very great, and you can really ask yourself. Read these verses in the book of Acts, read them, and then compare them to your Christian life right now. And then see, what is there any lack in these areas, or have you done already everything? Compare yourself with the first Christians. I really want to see how many people will take part in this challenge. Who is strong enough in faith to take part? Who is strong enough to admit that they are lacking in certain areas and that they can make it better? And who is interested in, resto in restoring the first assemblies of love and righteousness into their neighborhoods by Becoming a member of Triple Grace. 
by starting the first process, by going to the YouTube channel, by learning the resources, and then starting in a society of the rose in their neighborhood, to be like the first Christian, full of zeal, full of glory, and full of power, from above, from the Most High. Spreading the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to the darkest corner on this earth. The time is now. I thank you. I think this is a very special treat that you have here now. Take part in this challenge of the pure heart. Let's see what will come out in your life. How will you compare? Send me your messages and your comments to this, either on this video or through our ministry email triplegrace55 at gmail.com. And tell me if you're willing to become like a first Christian, if you're willing to join Triple Grace, if you're willing to go forward on that path to Mount Zion, where we will be raptured at the sixth seal into paradise. Ask me your questions. Let us come together. Let us have everything in common. Let us be a huge glorified group in the name of the Father. Let us spread the love of the Father into our neighborhoods. Let us be separated from the world and from Babylon, so that the people will see these groups, these people are different. Yes, they are different, because they are the followers of the past and the daily sacrifices of love into their neighborhoods. Be part of it. Take part in the challenge of a pure heart. Thank you that you have listened to it. Please, Take that challenge. I challenge you to take that challenge and compare yourself with the first Christians. See what we are lacking now, because we are coming now into this time period of the restoration of these assemblies of love and righteousness. The church age of the big buildings and mega churches is over. It's the end. And it's ending in the same way as the Catholic Church has ended just before the Chism in 1054 AD in disgrace. We are seeing so many bad things. We are seeing hunky punky in the church buildings. We see golf. They play golf in the church buildings. They have slides in the church buildings. They have an entertainment in the church buildings. The same what Jesus did in the temple when he saw the money changers. He removed everything. We have come to the same, same time. The church is not anymore a church, it is a carnival festival, but not a church anymore. And so the time has come to restore now, restore the altar of old, restore the altar of love, unity and support, and restore the assemblies of love and righteousness of the first believers in Jesus Christ at the time of the apostles. And you can come with us together and we can have everything in common and we can restore that path that will lead us then to Mount Zion, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to our Father Yahweh. There we will be raptured into paradise and we will receive our spiritual mansions as it is written in John 14 verse 2. And on the way to Mount Zion, we build the societies of the rose and we will gather in the lost sheep and we will gather in the harvest, the wheat harvest for the Lord. Be part of it. I challenge you to take that challenge. Take the challenge of a pure heart. Thank you for listening to this special video. And I want to see how many people will take part. Do not forget, it will be ending on the 2nd of September 2019. So take part right now and then we see what will happen. I will give you updates about that. My name is Michael. I am the founder of Triple Grace and the Righteous Pass Movement Foundation and the author of the Book of Love, the Standard Literature of Triple Grace. I hope you enjoyed this special topic and this special treat today and I would like to see you again tomorrow. May God bless you and your family abundantly. Have a great day. Maranatha.